Our next award is the Lufthansa Conservation and Environment Award. Now, conservation environment films can be very difficult to make. Some people find them too worthy, often too shocking, and at times, simply too boring. As a result, many companies have stopped making these types of films altogether, and those that do often find them difficult to place. One of our finalists here tonight is Frances Berrigan. She's an independent producer, and her film, Survival of the Apes, raises quite a few of these issues. It's more sweeter than the animals in town. Even the fingers. The fingers are sweet to eat. <laughs> there were legions of displaced people who had fled to the forest to try and make a living for themselves because the economy of that country had collapsed. And on the back of the uh, penetration of the forest by the logging companies, which are basically European finance, um, these people were going there and killing wild animals so that they could sell it to actually eat themselves. Joseph is one of a new breed of hunter-traders that came with the logging companies. On a good week, he'll sell ten bags like this. I think it's very hard to make a hard-hitting uh, conservation film that will get good ratings today. I think that there's a certain sort of tiredness on the part of the audience. It's a broad territory to be in. It's a valid one to be in. And I think if we, one enters the topic obliquely, you know, one looks at perhaps a strong human story within it, people will be interested in it. But I think in a sort of head-on current affairs way, conservation isn't something that reaches people in the way that perhaps it did 10 years ago. The gruesome trade in bushmeat now threatens to destroy the great apes of Africa. I think there's an enormous interest in conservation films. Um, they're probably very difficult to make because I think they can seem very dry and very, very worthy. For the gorilla, when it's fresh, let's say 10, 15,000 francs, 15,000 francs. The onus is on making those topics as interesting and intriguing as they are and using all the techniques that are at our disposal. And I think it's probably a bit of a problem that people have felt very passionate, but that passion hasn't come through in their films. It hasn't stirred the passions of the viewer. I think we have a responsibility to listen very carefully to what uh, all specialists in any field have to say, and particularly sort of campaigners in, in the wildlife area. Obviously, they have interesting stories often to offer us, but I don't think we have any moral obligation to broadcast what they want us to broadcast. Whether they change the world, uh, does television change the world, is the question. It means people are sitting in rather than going out. Um, I don't know. Out in uh, West Africa, they haven't even got electricity. So um, they're sitting in too, but not watching television. Well, it certainly made a very powerful film, and there were equally strong and powerful finalists in this category. Half a ton is a lot of seahorses, and the buyers scour the South Pacific for as many as they can find. Last night, Nong Nestor caught seven. A seahorse this size earns him 15 pesos, about 40 pence. Each year, Kruger culls several hundred elephant. One has got to just accept that the job's got to be done, and you basically switch it off, just totally switch off to it, and you do it as a routine job. And the finalists are with us tonight. They are Andrew Thompson and Lorraine Hegacy, who produced and directed The Secret Life of Seahorses, and Brian Leith, who produced and directed Gardens of Eden. And the winner is The Secret Life of Seahorses, produced, directed, and script written by Andrew Thompson. The Secret Life of Seahorses was the film which revealed the massive Far East trade in seahorses for Chinese medicine. Accepting the award with Andrew Thompson is series producer Lorraine Hegacy.